Hi guys, hope everyone's doing well. I have been MIA for a few days. I've been so busy with moving, so I just have not had a second to kind of catch my breath. I actually don't even have a spot right now to make videos because everything's still in boxes, so I'm still getting unpacked. So while I have a second right now to breathe, I thought I would um, catch you guys up with some updates. Okay, so first let's begin with my 6 Series 640i that came back with almost 7,000 miles on it over the span of a month, which was so crazy. That was the last video I posted. Um, so a little, a few updates on that. I had it taken to the dealership because it needed a full diagnostics done just to make sure, you know, if there's any issues with it that we get it taken care of. The good news was the day after I filed the claim, I got a call from my Turo claims agent, which is something that they started doing a while back, where as soon as you file a claim and it gets assigned to your claims agent, they will actually give you a call, which I think is a really nice feature because you get to talk to that person and it just kind of makes you feel better about the situation. Um, so in this case, because there was so many issues going on with the car, there was the two rear tires that were replaced with the wrong sizes. There was the brake pads that were replaced and the brake sensors were not replaced. Placed. Um, I had a bunch of error messages show up on the car like cruise control malfunction, um, the seatbelt restraints not working properly. So God knows what happened. And then on top of that, just the fact that it was driven 7,000 miles, my tires are completely worn out. So there was a lot going on in this situation. Um, so when I spoke to my claims agent, she just said, you know, the best thing to do right now is to go get a full diagnostics done. So we know exactly what's going on with the car so that we can proceed with the claim um, in the right way to cover all the different things. So um, it's been, it's unlisted right now and my dealership has been backed up so it's really taking quite some time to kind of get everything done and in motion which sucks because I'll definitely have at least a week or two of downtime when it comes to that but that's kind of where I'm at in the process um, this weekend and this week has also been really crazy so much going on all while I've been moving um, this weekend, actually this Corvette that I'm in, was impounded. Uh, the renter who rented the car was interesting because she was actually a repeat renter of mine. She's rented from me multiple times. I've had no issues. Cars have always come back on time. Communication was good. Um, you know, cars were clean. Just, it was seamless every single time. So she rented my Corvette again, which she has rented before. But this time, I guess she gave the car over to her son. Her son gets pulled over at about 4 a.m. for a DUI. And um, next thing I know is around 6 a.m. I get a phone call from the local police department saying that they seized a significant amount of drugs from the vehicle and that the car was impounded and that the person driving it was arrested. Um, and then given by the name that they gave me and stuff, I figured that it was the renter's son. I ended up speaking with her and she did confirm that it was in fact her son and that all this happened. So that was my weekend. Um, luckily it was really simple to go get the car out. So I'm glad that, you know, they didn't seize the car in any way for any type of investigation, which could happen as well. I have heard of those stories, but this was really easy. I had to go pay the impound fees, which were right around $400 or so. I spoke with the guest. She ended up reimbursing me. I gave her a couple of hours to reimburse me for the impound fees. Otherwise I would have to file the claim with Turo. Um, so she did reimburse me for the impound fees and then I pretty much just left it at that. I was so busy so I really didn't have time to pursue her for anything else or just the inconvenience of having to go get it. So that was my weekend um, but the car was in one piece. So I'm really glad I have some footage from the car which I'll just paste into this video at the end and that's when I first went and grabbed the car from the impound lot. Um, it was kind of dirty, had some um, spillage. I would look like alcohol in the car. I don't know. But anyways, car is good. It's already gone out on another trip and I actually just grabbed it from another renter. Okay. Next thing that has been going on is one of the things that I've noticed, I was talking to another local host who was experiencing the same thing is lately, I would say probably 75% of my rentals that are coming back have been coming back with like excessive weed and ash in the car so they're heavily being smoked in 
Well, what I came to found out, find out is that here in LA, apparently there's a bunch of underground parties that are going on and people are literally flying into town to attend these parties. And here's how I found out. Um, last week, my Jeep was out on a rental over the weekend and the girl ended up extending an additional day, I think um, till Tuesday it was. She was supposed to bring it back Monday morning and she had to extend till Tuesday because she said the party she was at, there was a shooting that happened and kind of turned into a crime scene investigation and that the Jeep was stuck because the investigation was ongoing. Funny enough, right after she extends her trip, I have the news on and I hear the news story and I was like, oh my God, this is where my car is at. Well, then I checked the GPS location of some of my other cars that also came back with a bunch of weed inside of them. And it turns out a lot of them were in the same area. So apparently there was some big party. But that is the trend that I've been seeing. I've been kind of looking at where these cars are going and they seem to be at sort of these large homes in the LA area and it seems like there's parties going on. So, you know, I guess people need to get out and need something to do since everything else is canceled this year. But again, um, it's, it's a pain in the ass when, you know, cars do come back smelling like weed and there's ash and you have to get it all cleaned out. But, you know, I do have my cleaning regimen down. I made a video where I use an ozone machine so it really cleans out the cars and then of course you get to claim for that smoking fee which I think rightfully slow so because it really does take time to get the car really cleaned well and get that smell out of it and you know it just takes up your time as a host so that's kind of what's been going on on that front and then finally today is August 12 2020 and one of um uh, the main changes that we just came across recently about the miles goes into effect, I believe as of today. So basically what Tiro did is they sunsetted the customization feature where you can set your price for the mileage overage. So for example, if you want to charge $1.50 per mile that goes over whatever is allotted for the reservation for that car. Um, they have done away with that and kind of set their own rule to that. So now what they do is they take your day rate, they divide it by the number of miles you have allotted for the car, and that gives you the per mileage overage for your vehicle. So um, a lot of people were not happy about that change and it's definitely affected me as well. Is it a great revenue stream? For sure, I have definitely made a decent amount of money on that. And the thing is, what I find interesting about this change, and it's what I was thinking about, is that I haven't seen Turo make very many changes where it affects their revenue streams, right? This is definitely a revenue vertical for them, and they take a big chunk out of it. So it definitely had to have been a pretty big source of profit for them. So for them to make this change must mean that they're finding that um, maybe their data is showing that people are not coming back on the platform once they experience being charged so heavily for miles and so if they can streamline streamline that um, maybe it's a more profitable route to have more repeat renters coming back to the platform which I could kind of see that um, so it's interesting that they made a change where they would also take a hit along with the host which I haven't seen very much of that um, has it negatively impacted me? In some ways, yes. I do have one car in particular that is a lease. It is not a deluxe car uh, or it's not classified as a deluxe car. And now they are going to shift the minimum daily miles on that from 100 to 200. And unfortunately on that car, because it is a lease and I'm towards the end of the lease, I really can't afford to do 200 miles per day on that car. So I am likely going to unlist that car off the platform because it's just not going to make sense revenue wise. And I don't want to take the risk of having the excess miles when it comes time to turn in that car. So I think definitely, you know, it has its ups and its downs, but I think on the positive side of it, it'll streamline the platform for sure. And I think another good thing is that when it comes to looking at your bottom line and making revenue, and especially on a platform like Turo, your revenue sources should not come from the ancillaries, right? Although Turo does have many avenues where they can come from ancillaries like excess mileage overage or cleaning fees or whatever it might be, I think real value is built into a platform when 
your bottom line is really strong from the core business, which is your day rates, that creates a lot of value in the marketplace for hosts, right? If we have to depend on making money off of ancillaries like excess mileage overages, that's not something that's really streamlinable, right? You can't count on that because that is not something that is consistent. Did I enjoy making money off of excess mileage? Of course, but it's not something that happens very often, at least not in my personal experience, maybe for other people it does. Um, so I think in a way it's good because now this is going to force the marketplace to really provide value on the host end via day rates. The day rates have to be able to support you know, this opportunity. It has to be worth it. So in many ways, I think that this is a really good change because Turo now is really going to be held accountable. They're going to have to make sure that the market can support higher day rates so that it makes sense for people to list their cars on the platform. I think a lot of people were getting by by making you know extra money off of these ancillaries to offset the money that they couldn't get on the day rates. So like I've been saying, day rates have to go up. That value has to go up. The quality has to go up. The experiences that you provide have to get better. And so this this is one way that I think is going to force the market to shift in that way and is really going to, again, hold Turo accountable to make sure that as hosts, we can get day rates that really have value in them. I mean, if they're making all these changes where they're eliminating making money off of ancillaries and on top of that, you're not getting the higher day rates, then why would people list their cars on the platform? They wouldn't, right? But like I've seen and other hosts who have been sending me messages have seen in this past month or so, we are getting those higher day rates. Follow me on Instagram at Simon's Experience. Um, lately, I have been posting like my trip receipts so that you guys can see some of the day rates that I've been getting. Um, so I do post reservation screenshots and things like that on Instagram since I can't on YouTube. And it's really informative, I think, for you guys to see exactly how I'm transacting. So I'll give you some insight to that. Um, all right. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up right here. I have more updates for you guys, which I'll bring to you in separate videos, different topics. But that's about it for me. I am glad to connect with you guys again and again. Sorry for being gone for a few days. Really had to get this move done as quickly as possible. Um, but hopefully I should have better studio space to bring you better content with better audio and visual and tons of good stuff coming down the pipeline. So once again, follow me at Simon's Experience on Instagram, subscribe to this channel for daily updates and my membership program will be starting first week of September and I will have lots and lots of good stuff for you guys, pricing strategy, customer support hacks, all kinds of good stuff. Talk to you guys soon. Take care and I'll add some snippets to my Corvette impounding that happened over the weekend. Take care guys. Okay, so at the tow yard, they just pulled the car out. Good news is that the car is in one piece. No damage, thank God. Um, really not much in the car. I found an empty uh, box of whiskey that a bottle came in. Other than that, the car actually looks okay. Uh, no cracks in the windshield, but of course you just wanna take lots of photos and make sure that you document everything in this type of situation. All right, I'm gonna go get this cleaned up, get all my photos, get gas in it, check out from that trip, and then I will update you guys in a little bit.